Hey guys, welcome back to our video series on our preliminaries for recursive macroeconomics. In this video, we're going to talk about the contraction mapping theorem. Let's go. So let's talk about why should we talk about contraction mapping? Recall in our verse video series, we want to study the Bellman equation. The Bellman equation is useful because we can generate a set of policy functions, right? Noted by G of K, which is essentially equal to the optimal value of K prime, which is our next period capital stock, which determines the optimal level of capital investment in each period given the parameters of our problems and current period capital K. In order to do so, we need to define the following operator T, right? Which is essentially uh, solving this maximization problem of the Bellman equation. Though it looks similar to uh, the Bellman equation, what TV does is it says that we're gonna go and solve for the first period's value function and plug it into the next one over and over and over again. In this one here, I'm just saying we run this procedure only once. But what we want to do is that we wanna run this procedure a number of times. The solution to this problem is a fixed point of this operator t, meaning that our goal is not necessarily to find an optimal value, it's to solve for this optimal function uh, v within our function. This simply says that if we were to apply this operator at its optimum value, it would simply obtain this optimal function. Bottom line, contraction mapping is important for properly identifying optimal policy functions when solving an optimal solution for which has infinitely many variables to solve for, which is the problem that we are dealing with. So let's talk about actually visualizing regular functional mapping. If T was a regular function, we'd be going and taking variables from space X and we'd be mapping it to space Y or from space A to space B, right? Just going from in one direction, one way to the next. When we're talking about contraction mapping, we're taking functions and we're mapping them to an area within itself. We're, as in we're taking uh, these values, we're pulling them and we're mapping them to a subset of itself. Um, the goal here is to get to that red point over here by going and iterating this procedure over and over and over again. So it'll go and bow outwards again. If we were to go and iterate T of F of G again, we would probably, uh, go and get some value closer to this red star here, which is our fixed point. Um, and once we're at that fixed point, we can go and stay at that fixed point if we were to go and solve that again. Thus, we have convergence to a optimal value function. So in terms of giving a formal definition of a contraction mapping, let SD be a metric space, right? S being our set and D being our metric, such that T maps s to s right it's a function of s onto itself the function t is a contraction mapping if there exists a number beta right which lies on the interval of zero to one satisfying the following right that is if we have our distance function of between t of x and t of y right meaning that we have t acting on x right this function t acting on x and t acting on y right that's going to be at least as good as um, applying this beta to this distance function, right? Which goes and shrinks it, where beta is called the modulus of our contraction mapping. So this definition says two things. The first one is that a contraction mapping takes items from one set and maps it to another set. And two is that a contraction mapping acts on two points in a set in such that it shrinks the distance between the two points of that set, at least as well as the use of a modulus B. However, uh, the use of this contraction mapping, though, is with reference to functions, not necessarily points. So now let's define the contraction mapping theorem. For a formal definition, let SD be a complete metric space and suppose that T maps S to itself is a contraction mapping with modulus beta. We can then say that the operator T has exactly one fixed point V naught contained in S and for any V naught contained in S and any N contained in our natural numbers, we can go and say that the distance between our T acting on our V naught N times and our optimal V is going to be less than or equal to our beta acting on our distance between our initial guess for V naught and V N times. 
This tells us that starting from any arbitrary guess for v naught, if we go and apply t n times to that function, we can approach our optimal value at a rate of beta. This is important because we can effectively use this as a tool for showing that there exists a true policy function. So uh, that's our video on the contraction mapping theorem. I'll see you in the next one where we talk about Blackwell's sufficiency conditions. Take care.